Now let's go to the phone. Let's bring in Dr. Anissa Ramirez. She calls herself a science evangelist. She's a former professor of mechanical engineering at Yale, and she's been bombarded with media requests lately, primarily because she's written a book called Newton's Football, The Science Behind America's Game. So let's bring in Dr. Ramirez. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. All right, so, so first question, I mean, Woody brought it up. Um, does this serve as an advantage to the quarterback, the wide receivers, the center? Uh, d do you believe that this would have helped the New England Patriots that day? I think an under-inflated ball helps most of the players because for the reasons that you just mentioned, it improves the grip if you're throwing the ball. Also, if you're catching the ball, it's easier to catch. So there's def definitely an advantage to having a ball that's under-inflated. Dr. Ramirez, I, I just bring this up uh, to back up what you're saying. When I was in high school playing basketball, we would actually deflate the ball a little bit so we could palm the basketball in order to... We also lowered the basket in practice so we could dunk the basketball. So even when, I, you know, I was a part of kind of a scandal, if you will, but we, we weren't doing it in the games, but we were doing it in warm-ups so we would impress or depress the opposing team. <laughs> so to speak. I mean, you know, the reason why Nerf footballs are very, very popular is not only because they're very soft, it's because it's easy to grasp. Yeah. So that's an extreme case of an underinflated ball, how an underinflated ball would feel, but that's essentially why they're so lovable. So, yeah, it definitely has an advantage. You, you'll, you'll find when you're with us, Dr. Ramirez, that Les Shapiro is not easy to grasp either. <laughs> <laughs> but if you let a little air out of me. But <laughs> oh, uncentral today. Hey, uh, Dr. Ramirez, um, I, I'm wondering about um, who you think might be responsible for this. I, I, know, I know you're a professor of mechanical engineering, not a professor of psychology necessarily, but when you, you've been all over this, so I'm wondering when you've watched Belichick talk and you've watched Tom Brady talk, who do you believe? I can't weigh in on that because I'm just focusing on the science. I mean, I believe they believe what they're saying, and that's as far as I can kind of go. But there's probably some people who could look at their faces when they're saying these things and get a better sense of if, they're, if they are deceiving us or not. I can't speak to that. I can only tell you about how the ball performs under, under inflation or if it's overinflated. Yeah, Dr. Ramirez, I, I've heard uh, various comments from Mark Brunel, a quarterback I know when, when he was in the National Football League, that says it's certainly an advantage for a quarterback, and he believes that an underinflated ball will travel far, farther than a, a one that's pumped up. I've heard that doesn't from others, make a lot of sense I've to me. I've heard from others at ESPN that it probably would travel less. So I hope you can give us some better insight into this. Yeah, well, on paper, if you were to uh, have an underinflated ball, it actually is a little lighter. It has less mass. And so it wouldn't travel as far. So that's the reason the thinking behind a ball not traveling as far. But you can also see uh, from the person who has more anecdotal uh, story that if you have a better grip, maybe you're able to throw it harder. I don't know. But on paper, the physics says that the ball will not travel as far for the reasons I mentioned, because it has less weight. Um, so that, that's how I would look at it. Well, let's take the other end of it. Do you think a ball like that is easier to catch for a wide receiver? Or is there enough evidence or scientific support to, to gauge that either way? Yeah, well, you know, my technical term is squishiness, and the squishier the ball is, the easier it is to grab out of the air and easier it is to throw. So both the quarterback and the receiver would benefit from an underinflated ball. Uh, I also think a kicker would benefit as well. We, don't, we haven't talked about that, but kickers would love an underinflated ball because it would be squishier, it'd have more contact area so that the foot hits the ball and they would be able to transfer their momentum from their leg to the ball so it would fly out further. I, I, I'm sure that both of you saw, because you couldn't help it, there was a catch made by Odell Beckham Jr. during the course of the season where he reached up behind him and grabbed with one hand. I think it supports what you're talking about, and I'm not accusing him or the New York Giants or anything, but I'm just saying <laughs> that it would seem like, as you say, that a squishier ball, as you referred to it. I guess that's a scientific term, squishier. That is a scientific <laughs> term, and we've, we've just formulated. And we also have to remember that the day was really, really rainy, you know, so a ball is going to be slippery. Uh, you know, someone who's in mechanical engineering would say that there's less friction between one's hand and the ball. 
And so any advantage that you can to make it, you know, uh, you know, grip that you can grip it better is going to be helpful because that was a really sloppy day. Uh, Dr. Ramirez, uh, before we let you go, tell us a little bit about uh, the book, Newton's Football, the science behind America's game and where we can pick it up. Well, Newton's Football is available on Amazon and any place that sells books. Uh, we answer crazy questions like, why don't woodpeckers get concussions? Uh, we talk about things that you may not have known, like how the face mask actually made the game more dangerous and gave rise to the concussion epidemic that we're in the midst of right now. And I wrote it with uh, Alan St. John, and it came out uh, about a year ago. I would like to ask you a final question, Dr. Ramirez. Is this Woody Page? I'm the, I'm the one with all the puns and the, and the smart-ass remarks. But, uh, <laughs> and I mean this one very seriously. That's how I set it up there. I have maintained that football in the future would be a better game if they removed the helmets. And I'm talking about not have helmets, like the game of rugby or Aussie rules football. Do you have an opinion about that, or does that fall into your realm of yeah. uh, the well, science? When, when I when Alan and I were writing Newton's football, we looked at the concussion, the number of concussions for different sports, rugby, uh, Aussie football, Canadian football, and those that did not have helmets had less concussion rates. And football was almost 10 times stuff like rugby and soccer. So there's something about having a football, especially when it has a face mask. We feel invincible, and so we use our heads to tackle. Uh, with a rug, in rugby, there's a certain threat that if you use your head, you're going to break your nose, break your jaw, and you're not going to use your head. So there's just definitely some thinking about how the helmet changes our behavior. So they're worried, you know. Yeah, we, we I, I just think we. I, I personally think we were better off with the leather helmets the early days of football because you couldn't use the head as a weapon, and that's the, that's think, right. Well, check out Newton's football because the reason why the helmet was invented was not to mitigate concussions. It was actually to prevent skull fractures. There was one year where 18 mm. men died from skull fractures, and that's why they went to the harder, harder helmet. But once we added the face mask, what happened is that we started using our heads, and that gave rise to this concussion epidemic. But you can learn more about the details in Newton's football. Great uh, information. Yeah, Dr. Ramirez, thank you very much. Once again, the, the book is called Newton's Football, The Science Behind America's Game, and, uh, and we'll be talking to you uh, hopefully in the near future. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, guys.